Hi everyone, this is Windsor Philip, and for now I will be giving you my lecture about an introduction to the world of statistics, which is a guide to grade 11 students under the senior high school curriculum. Now, when we talk about statistics, it is a branch of mathematics that deals with the scientific collection, organization, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of the numerical data to obtain a useful and meaningful information. When we say collection of data, it refers to the process of obtaining the information. Organization of data here refers to the ascertaining the manner of presenting the data into tables, graphs, or charts so that logical and statistical conclusions can be drawn from the collected measurements. But analysis of data here refers to the process of extracting how do you get from the given data the relevant information from which numerical description can be formulated. Well, the interpretation of data, which is as important as other, as other steps here, is the task of drawing conclusions from the analyzed data. There are ways to interpret data and data can be used in different ways at the same time. The body of knowledge called statistics is sometimes divided into two main areas and that is depending on how data are used. So the two areas of statistics are the following. We have first the descriptive statistics which provides a summarized, organized and simplified way simplifying data rather. In descriptive statistics that a statistician tries to describe a situation. How do you make a summary? How do you organize and how do you simplify the, the data obtained from the given situation? Now consider the national census conducted by the government every 10 years. Results of the census give you the average age, income, and other characteristics of the country's population. To obtain this information, the Census Bureau must have some means to collect the relevant data. So once data are collected, the Bureau must organize and summarize them. Finally, the Bureau needs a means of presenting the data in some meaningful form such as using the graphs, the charts, or the tables. So again, when we say descriptive statistics, the procedures here include summary, summarize, organize, and simplify the data that you collected. The other area of statistics is, we call this as the inferential statistics. It consists of generalizing from samples to populations, performing estimations and hypothesis tests, and determining relationships among variables and making predictions. Here, the statistician tries to make inferences from samples to populations. Because populations are very or typically very large, it usually is not possible to measure everyone in the population. There, therefore, a sample is selected to represent the population. Take note that when we say sample, this is taken from the population, a representation of our population. For instance, suppose a survey group wants to know the prevailing sentiments among Filipino people on a certain issue, asking every Filipino to answer a questionnaire would be, would be impossible because you have to consider every Filipino on this issue. It is very expensive, time-consuming, and impractical. Instead, a small part of the entire population is scientifically and um, probability chosen. The gather data from this group is used to draw the general opinion of the inter entire population. Just like, for example, for now, uh, it is an election season and we are conducting or the, there are independent organizations conducting surveys. Uh, they were not able to get the data from the entire uh, Filipino people. Instead, they made use of the samples, which are representations of the population, which include the Filipino people. Always try to, to remember that the population is always greater than your, than your sample because your sample is taken from your population. Take note of it. Now, let's talk about the parametric and non-parametric test. When we say parametric statistics, it makes the number of assumptions about the entire population from which the sample has been drawn. 
So you make assumptions about the entire population, which, which of course, the source of your sample. The, not, the parametric test assumes that the variable being measured should be normally distributed. The sample size here is large, and samples are randomly chosen, and variables must be equal. Again, when we say randomly distributed, when the population is randomly dis distributed, the sample size is large, samples are randomly chosen, and the variances must be equal. So, take note of it. Then, when we say the non-parametric statistics, on the other hand, it is a hypothesis test that does not require the population's distribution to be characterized by certain parameters. It does not assume the data or the outcome to be normally distributed because samples are not randomly chosen, the sample size is not large, and the variances are assumed not to be equal. Take note of, of the negation. It is not randomly chosen, the sample size is not large, and variances, again, are not equal. Now, non-parametric statistics refers to a statistical method in which the data are not assumed to come from prescribed models that are determined by a small number of parameters. Examples of such models include the normal distribution model and the linear regression model. So we will talk of this more in this, in this topic, uh, the tools related to the parametric and the non-parametric statistics. Again, we were talking about or we are talking about the population and sample. To understand more about population and sample, here are um, the definition we have for the population. It is a set of individuals of interest in a particular study. Because populations tend to be very large, it usually is impossible for a researcher again to examine every individual in the population of interest. It's like for example, just like what I said about surveys, you cannot you cannot um, have or you cannot conduct a survey for all of the Filipino people. That's why uh, we have this um, sample sizes. Therefore, researchers typically select a smaller, more manageable group from the population and limit their studies to the individuals in the selected group. That's why we, we, we take this uh, sample size from the population to represent the entire interest of the larger people or the larger group. Sample is a set of individuals from a population usually intended to represent a population research in, in a research study. A sample is intended to be representative of its population and a sample should always be identified in terms of the population from which it was selected. So take note, your sample must come from your population identified by the researcher. So let's talk about um, sampling error. Now one problem with using samples, however, is that a sample provides only limited information about the population. Although samples are generally representative of their populations, a sample is not expected to give a perfectly accurate pic picture of the whole population. There is usually some discrepancy between a sample statistic and the corresponding population parameter. So this discrepancy, discrepancy is called, we call this as the sampling error, and it creates the fundamental problem that inferential statistics must always address. So there is a sampling error which creates, which is the discrepancy of conducting or of choosing your sample. Now, sampling error is the naturally occurring discrepancy that exists between a sample statistic and the corresponding population parameter. So when we say a sample that that is that is statistics, when we say parameter that refers to population. The margin of error is a sampling error and always you do not expect the statistics from a sample to be perfect and there is always a margin of error when sample statistics are used to represent the population parameters. So talking about parameters and statistics when describing data, it is necessary to distinguish between the data, whether the data come from a population or a sample. A characteristics characteristic that describes a population for example the average score of the population we call that as the parameter and the characteristic that describes the sample is called your statistics thus the average score for example is an example of statistics so typically the research process begins with a sample or a question about a population parameter however the actual data come from a sample and are used to compute for the sample statistics. So we have this uh, remaining terms to be discussed about parameters and statistics. Again, when we say parameter, that is a value usually 
a numerical value that describes a population and a parameter is usually derived from measurements of the individuals in the population. So parameter is for population. When we talk about statistic, it is a value, usually a numerical value that describes a sample and it is usually derived from measurements of the individuals in the sample. So when we say statistic, that is closely related to sample. So these are some of the terms related to an introduction of the study about statistics. I hope that you have learned something, something from this lesson that we have. And I hope that you get to be familiar with all the terms related to the study of statistics. Thank you.